bring up your web browser. And uh, I have it up here, but I'm going to type it in. It's anthropology.ua.edu slash blogs. This is the whole blog network. Uh, your course is neuroanthropology, so you can just type that in. And you're going to go right down here to Meta, where it says Login. And I'm going to get you all set up with a login. It will be your username. And... Um, I'll get a password issued to you. You should get an email indicating what that password is. If not, uh, right after the semester starts, send me an email to find out. So mine's already in there, although I think it's got the wrong one. Let's find out. Nope, that worked. Okay. So the first thing you see is your dashboard, and you guys are going to be adding posts. So it's very easy. You go right here to post, add new, and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be reviewing articles. And so uh, you'll put an article, you'll come up with a snazzy title for it. Don't just put the article's name, don't just put my review of blah blah blah. This is a blog post. It's for the public. Um, it's also for your classmates. Um, we want these things to be useful. Um, you're going to be reviewing articles that you read for class, and you're going to be uh, reviewing articles as a web log as part of your research process for the research proposal that you write. Uh, now, on the one hand, if you're just keeping a log, there's no real reason to come up with a snappy title. But as I said, we're, we're also doing public anthropology here. We're pushing stuff out there for consumption by anyone who should care to read it. Um, the people who generally read these things are the people who actually wrote the article, who for one reason or another uh, have put their own name into a Google search and come up with your review, or someone has sent it to them. Um, it's likely that I might send it to them, because I know a lot of these people and want to publicize what we're doing in this class. So you have to put some effort in here, that in, into it. That's that's one reason to put a snappy title in. The second reason to do a snappy title is because this is a writing class, and part of writing is uh, style, and uh, your title should be reflective of the content of your review. It should say something about your review, and also be compelling. Now, being put on the spot right here to show you what we're doing and I don't have an article handy to review so I'm just going to put uh, snazzy title right there okay and you can subtitle it um, then you can put something in review of blah 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 although if you put that in there people are, are less likely to actually read it if they know it's a review of something so I, I suggest you don't and then you're going to you're going to write your review. Now, as I said in the instructions, the review doesn't have to completely summarize the article. When you um, are doing the reviews for the articles assigned for class, they have specific instructions where we're looking at uh, some of these articles as how they represent um, human adaptations and you're going to be posting some of this information to the psych table, um, which your syllabus tells you about. Um, some of them won't be appropriate for that, but you're going to use the same format. So you may uh, review the article, you may discuss the methodology, you may address if the methodology uh, meets the criteria of validity. In other words, does it actually test what it purports to test? Does it provide support for the theoretical model being represented? Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the details of that. When you write web logs, you're going to write about what's important for your research proposal. Um, 
you can look at my web blog, uh, Cheap Thrills Through Evolution, on the EVOS Consortium site. I do this a lot. Um, I took my style or my approach uh, directly from John Hawks, who uh, has been writing a, a web blog for many, many years. And I consider it a place, a public repository for my writing ideas. And a lot of these are ways to pre-digest stuff that ends up in my academic and my non-academic writing. And so that's what this is going to be for you as well. So you may not want to summarize an entire article. It may not all be relevant. There may be one aspect of it that's really relevant to you, or it may uh, um, inspire some ideas um, uh, or a way to improve upon an article that, you, that, that inspire you to develop uh, your research. And, and that's what I want to see here. I want to see um, what about the article is important to you. Tell us about it and then tell us why. So you're going to post uh, this article is friggin' awesome. It blew my mind because of its awesomeness. And you're going to write, I don't know, 500, 1,000 words, a few pages on this. When you do the review for a class, when you do your web blog, there's no specific amount. Um, but remember, this is a writing class. You're not just writing bullets. You're not just writing sentence fragments. You don't necessarily have to be structured in essay form every single time. But you definitely have to remember that there's people out there reading this, including me. Uh, but there are other people out there as well, and you want to be com you want to communicate. Um, one way that we communicate in these blogs is by shorthand. Uh, we do do some shorthand, and we shorthand through hyperlinks, right? So I may I may not want to uh, define every single term, right? So in this particular sentence, um, I don't know uh, the word mind. Now we all know what a mind is, but you know we can actually have some philosophical debates on that. So let's go over here to uh, another uh, tab and look up the word mind. And let's see, uh, Wikipedia is not our favorite resource, but it's a quick and dirty resource for a lot of things. And it has some of the philosoph philosophical arguments about these things there. So let's just direct people there for th the sake of argument. I'm going to copy that link. We're going to go back over here, we're going to highlight mind, we're going to click on the link, and we're going to paste that right in there, and I don't, I like it to open up in a different window so people can get right back to it, that's up to you, um, and we're going to add the link. Um, if, uh, you, you might have noticed when I did that, uh, it actually gave me the option of clicking on another page within the same site. That's within the neuroanthropology site. If there is another page that you want to refer to, there probably won't be. But if there were, uh, you could simply click here without having to do the link. All right. So uh, there is our uh, entry. Now, I also like to pretty things up. For instance, you're going to find this video embedded in a page. Um, we can do stuff like that um, right here, add media. Um, I really like visual um, aspects of a site. Um, I like videos. I like all those things that draw people in. So let's just go find some random picture. And let's see. Um, I'm trying to find one that's appropriate. Or better, better put, not inappropriate. Well, screw it. Here's a picture of my son with a fossil that he found. It's not neuroanthropology, but it's evolution. It's close enough. And so we go down here. We can orient it left, center, or right. Um, we can change the size of it to be really big, relatively big, or a thumbnail. I tend to like medium and to orient them to the left or the right, which causes the text automatically to wrap around it. Um, if I had more text, as you can see, it would wrap around it. And I probably should have put a caption. You should probably caption your stuff. Um, he 
found this at Harold Station, our paleoanthropological, our paleo, paleontological field site here in Alabama, owned by our museum. Pretty cool. And one of the most important things that you can do so this can be accessible and findable is to add a tag. So that's his name. Um, there's not a whole lot of tags I can put there, but um, more broadly speaking, we can add new categories. Um, everything on this will be related to neuroanthropology. So um, I'll just put blogging. Category here is, is about is about blogging, and um, you can pre you you want to save your draft or you want to work on it, uh, come back to it later. Um, you save it that way, and you can then view it uh, this way, um, and then go back to it whenever you're ready to edit. Right here. Um, and when you're ready to publish it, publish it here, and it'll appear on the front page. I'm not going to publish this one. Oh, one last thing. Let's see. Set featured image. I want you to set a featured image uh, for every post. And the reason is because when you don't set a featured uh, image, this appears. And I want a picture. I want it to look better on our front page. So whatever your main image is, choose that as your set as your featured image. Um, Hopefully, it won't double it. If it doubles it, don't worry about it. I will fix it later. And I'll show you what I mean about that. Yeah, it doubled it. All right. So um, if you have an image that you want it to appear at the top, just use it as your featured image and not and don't, don't also post it. Um, but if you do, don't worry about it. I'll fix it. That's the least important aspect of the whole thing. Um, and then once you've posted it, let's go ahead and post this one. No one is going to know it's out there. Publish it. Go to view post. And I haven't included the widgets yet for Facebook and Twitter, um, unfortunately, so I can't show you what I was getting ready to show you. But right down here at the bottom of every post will be a share button, share to Facebook, uh, especially our course page, which I have to set up, uh, share it to Twitter, uh, hashtag ant474 or hashtag neuroanthropology, either one, um, so people can see it. And make sure that you notify everyone in the class with an email. And that's that. If you have any questions, post a comment below this um, video, and I will be sure to address it for you.